Welcome back to part two of this series, which is centered around some questions from a viewer out there named Aries who DM me on Twitter. Aries wanted to know how to detect stocks that have gapped up or down by a certain percentage and also wanted to associate those symbols with any news or earnings data. In part one, we discussed how to fetch price data for large cap and small cap stocks and use pandas to filter that data and find stocks that gapped up or down by a certain percentage. In this video, we're going to be focused on the second part of this question, which is how to find earnings and news data, and maybe we'll even classify some of this data as well. To do this, we'll use a couple of different data sources. I'll show you how to fetch news using the Alpaca News API. We'll fetch both historical news data, and I'll show you how to do a real-time streaming news data over WebSockets. And I'll also show you how to use the free Y Finance package to fetch data from Yahoo, which is very simple. And also we can fetch earnings calendar data from that as well. And I also noticed Rahul from Alpaca has already written an article about this, and he used this library called uh, Transformers to do a sentiment analysis on the news and I thought I'd incorporate that as well because I hadn't tried that out before and maybe we can dive into this hugging face a little bit more in the future if we start diving into machine learning. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. I'm going to start off in Google Colab here and we're just going to do a pip install of all these packages so that they're available inside of Google Colab. After that, we can go ahead and import all of the different packages we're going to need. We're going to use Y Finance, and once again, we're going to use the Alpaca REST API, and I'm going to enter in my Alpaca uh, API key and secret key so that we have the API configured. And once that's done, this is dead simple. There's almost nothing to do. So you can just call api.getNews and pass it a symbol and it'll return this nice uh, structured data for you. And it's gonna be tagged all nicely uh, with different symbols, a summary. It gives you images in the articles. It gives you a timestamp, a headline, yeah, a summary, and you can even get the content of the article. And I think this is through a partnership uh, with Benzinga, who provides a news API. And I think if you go directly through Benzinga, this can be pretty expensive. There are a couple of parameters to be aware of. You can specify a start and end date if you just want to look at news for a particular day. So let's say we're looking at stocks that gapped up or down and we know the exact dates, we can filter by a start and end date. And you can also pass include content and it'll give you the entire uh, body of the article. That way you don't have to uh, fetch the URL and screen scrape it yourself. It'll be right there in the JSON object right here. So if we wanna loop through that data, we can just loop through for story in news that we fetch and we can just print the headline and the summary and we can even show all the different images there. And so I fetched all the news data uh, for Tesla here and I can click on any of these images. Maybe you wanna use one of those. Now to fetch earnings news and the earnings calendar, you can just use Y Finance right here. And so I imported Y Finance. You can pass it a ticker symbol here like Netflix and I can retrieve uh, the quarterly earnings or the annual earnings just like that. So I got the revenue and the earnings and I can even access that ticker's earnings calendar. And the Yahoo Finance package even provides a news attribute for the ticker. And so if I run that, you can see I can get a list of news articles uh, for Netflix. Now the response here doesn't have quite as much data. It's very simple. It just has a headline and just has a link here. So you'll have to visit the link or screen scrape the link yourself. Uh, but in the Alpaca News API here, you're able to get the full content. It also has like author data, it has a summary of the article. And if that article is associated with multiple symbols, you actually get a list here. So it's in a structured format. And so I could look at all the other symbols that are related to this article. Now, as discussed on this Alpaca article, you may want to classify this news or you might want to run this uh, sentiment analysis on it and in this article they use uh, this package called a uh, transformers and I looked this up and this is on the hugging face website and so this hugging face website has a whole collection of different packages for machine learning so it looks like a uh, problem solvers, so solve AI, vision, and language problems. There's transformers and tokenizers. There's an inference API and all kinds of different stuff available here. I haven't looked into this a lot yet, but I would like to. So it's a simple way to get started here. Here's just a few lines of code you can write to do sentiment analysis. And so from transformers, you can import uh, this pipeline object and you can create a new pipeline here. If you look at pipeline on the hugging face documentation, there's a whole lot of different pipelines here. There's audio classification, uh, feature extraction, question answering pipeline, 
text-to-text -text generation, and there is also a sentiment analysis here. And so what we do here is we just pass sentiment analysis, and then we create a classifier. And so if I run this, you'll see it actually takes a little while. If you look at the bottom here, it'll, you'll see it's actually uh, making a request and actually downloads a variety of data that it needs to uh, do this sentiment analysis. And then once we have this, uh, all we need to do is pass it a string of text. And so if I were to run a classifier like that, and then I gave it a happy, it's probably gonna say it's positive and it gives it a score for uh, this particular word. If I were to run it again with some text like, uh, let's say uh, death, a negative word, and ran that, yeah, it gives it a label of negative, And I'm sure there's some things that are more uh, hard to distinguish. So if I said uh, the fox crossed the road, it probably has no idea about uh, how to classify that. So if I do that and run it, it says positive, but the score is a bit lower. So there's nothing necessarily bad about the fox crossing the road. Let's say if the fox crossed the road and got hit by a car and was injured, right? Uh, if I run that, yeah, there you go. Now it's negative. And so this classifier is trained and knows how to label a string of text as negative or positive with a certain score of confidence. And so we can run this here and I'm just printing the headline and I'm trying to classify the story summary. What I found, it's hard to tell how accurate this is. Uh, so let's see, Elon Musk, SpaceX, fast response to a Russian attack, recognized as eye-watering, it gives that a positive. Tesla extending lead in EV arms race, positive. Markets fall as investors weigh earnings, negative. Funding secured for possible Elon Musk Twitter takeover. It says that's negative. So yeah, that one's even hard to interpret as a human. And then we have a headline on ARK Invest says it sees Tesla driving EV stock to $4,600 a share, which is crazy. So that sounds very positive, but it labels it as negative. And maybe it is negative. Kathy Wood hasn't been picking so well uh, lately, so maybe the move is to do the opposite of what Kathy says. And then there's a Wall Street Bets headline. So I guess Wall Street Bets was talking about some stocks. It said positive, but it had a low score here, so you probably can't really determine whether that's positive or negative. All right, so I've shown some basic examples on how to fetch news for a given date range, and we also use this basic classifier here. So now let's go ahead and talk about real-time streaming news over WebSockets. And so if you watch the GridBot video or any of my WebSocket videos, I've already talked about this WebSocket client. If you don't have it already, you can install a WebSocket client uh, just like that. Oop, just like that, if I spell it right, and it'll run and install the client and it's just referring to this WebSocket client that you can Google and it's right here. And it talks about how to create your first WebSocket connection. So you just need to instantiate this WebSocket object and you need to connect to it and you can start sending it messages and receiving events. So if you look at the Alpaca documentation, you see they have a streaming endpoint right here. So you just need to connect to this WebSocket address and you need to send it your auth authentication using your API key and your secret key. So you connect to this and then you send it a JSON message and then once you're connected and authenticated, you just need to subscribe to any stock or crypto symbols that you're interested in getting news about. So here you can see I've done exactly that. I created a new WebSocket app. I gave it that WebSocket address in the documentation and then I passed a number of callback functions to it. So on open, I want to run a bit of code. On message, I wanna run a bit of code. And so I just pass it these different functions. And in these different functions, we handle the events. And so as soon as I connect, I want to run a particular function when this WebSocket connection opens. And so what do I wanna do when the WebSocket connection first opens? I wanna send my authentication message to authenticate. So I have my on open function here, it accepts a WebSocket. And so I print open connection. And then as soon as that connection is open, I send a message to that WebSocket by doing ws.send and my message looks like this. So I'm going to send a JSON message. So I'm doing JSON.dumps, and this is a Python dictionary. The action is auth, and then my key is my API key from Alpaca, and my secret is right here. Just like it's described here, I send it my key and my secret key in that format. So once I'm connected to that WebSocket and I've sent my authentication message, I need to just start handling messages, right? And so I give it an on message function. So my on message function gets a couple of inputs. It has a reference to the WebSocket called WS, and it also receives any new messages that come in. And all you really need to do is print the messages that are received. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this particular line out, and I'm just gonna do a pass here. I'm gonna 
show you what happens whenever I connect to the WebSocket and send my authentication message. So I'm gonna run this. And so I connect, the WebSocket is open, I send this authentication message, and then I'll pack a response to me with a new message that it has a success and a message authenticated. So my on message function here is handling that message and I'm just printing it out. And that's what's actually printing uh, this bit here, this success and authenticated. Now, according to the documentation here, I need to send another message. So after I authenticate, I need to send a message to subscribe to any symbols of interest. And so I'm parsing that message out and loading it into a Python a data structure here here and I'm checking for the message authenticated so that I know I'm successful. And after that, what I want to do is go ahead and send my subscribe message. And so I'm going to send another message to that WebSocket after I've authenticated to that WebSocket. So after I receive that authentication message, uh, I'm going to send another message and I'm going to send it uh, action subscribe and news star if I just want to stream all news. Or I can just send it a list of symbols like this if I just want to receive Apple and Tesla news. And so I run that and you see I've sent this message for subscribe and you can see I have some acknowledgement of the message right here. And then if we wait for a bit, we should start receiving some news. And just so we don't have to wait, I can scroll up to where I was using this earlier and you can see uh, this is how it looks when you start receiving news. And so in this on message function, you can process this streaming news that comes in and do whatever you wanna do with it. And one thing I didn't notice at the time, there's actually a stream client object that's built in to the Alpaca Trade API for Python. And so you can actually just create this stream object, pass an API key and secret key, and you can just call subscribe news and give it a function and a symbol here, and then run this stream client. And you just pass it this async function here called news data handler, and you can just uh, process the news however you want in there. And this is actually much cleaner and simpler than what I just did. I, I wrote this out without reading the whole thing, but this is also available and applicable in many different contexts. So it's nice to know how to use the WebSocket client library as well. So that's it for this video on news. In the next video in this series, we'll take a look at this Quant Rocket article that discusses whether to buy or sell stocks at Gap up or down. We'll take a look at their findings here, and then we'll write some code to actually place some trade based on this article. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next part of the series. Thanks.